Is there an ideal volume that we should be mixing our music at? Is it bad if we mix too quietly or too loudly? What about if you can only really hear or feel the bass at really loud volumes, is that okay? All these things are gonna be covered in this video today. Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Bobby Balo, the mixing and mastering engineer at Raytown Productions. And this channel is dedicated to helping you make better sounding music without needing to spend a ton of money on expensive gear or unnecessary plugins. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because I drop new videos every single week that's gonna help you level up the quality of your music. Since we're talking about home studios today and setting the right volume for our speakers, I thought I'd give you a special gift. In the description, I have a link to download my complete home studio gear recommendation guide. This has my suggestions for what I know works and sounds great in any home studio. All of my recommendations are based on scientific measurements or data, none of the marketing crap. So you're going to get the best value gear possible. So for a list of my recommendations for everything from microphones to speakers, definitely go in the description, check out that link to that free gear guide. All right, so let's talk about volume level and how loud you should be mixing your music. Turns out there is an ideal window that we should be mixing in. You might have heard of this thing called the Fletcher Munson curve. This is actually an outdated curve that tells us that our ability to hear frequencies depends on the volume that we're listening to it at. And as the volume is increasing, our frequency response of our ears changes. And it turns out there's a sweet spot. It tends to be about 74 to 80 dBA. The A just means that the frequency range is weighted in a certain way. And on a lot of different sound pressure level meters, A weighting is very common. So that's what we'll use for this recommendation. Now what's tricky here is that it's a lot harder for us to hear bass frequencies. They have to be significantly louder for us to feel like the volume is at the same level as something that's at like 1K. So what does this mean? It means that we tend to crank up our studio monitors to hear the low energy in a mix. And based on the data that's been recently collected in the Equal Loudness Contours, which is basically just an updated version of the Fletcher Munson curves, we know that that is true. That the louder we crank the music, the more even the frequencies tend to sound to us. So is it bad to mix at really, really loud volumes all the time if that gives us like the flattest frequency response? And the answer is, yeah, you can actually damage your hearing if you're mixing too loud for long periods of time. And the amount of time depends on how loud you're actually mixing at. So the National Institutes of Occupational Safety and Health has issued a suggested volume for an eight-hour workday. And what they recommend is we stay below 85 dBA if we're going to be mixing for eight hours. Some of you might mix for a lot longer. In that case, you probably should actually have it quieter than that. Now I find 85 dBA to be really loud and my ears will fatigue to the point where I don't think I have good perspective on a mix and I'll have to take a break and walk away for a bit. Now for every three decibels you go above that recommended limit, the amount of time that you can listen to music at that volume decreases in half. So if you mix at six decibels louder than 85, so at 91 dBA, you will now take those eight hours that you should be listening to music Cut that in half to four, and then cut it in half again to two hours. So at 91 dBA, you shouldn't listen to music for more than two hours, or you can risk damaging your hearing. Now, just to give you a little bit more perspective, if you're at 100 dBA, which is what a lot of car stereos can handle, if you crank it way up, you only have about 15 minutes of listening before you damage your hearing. And remember, every three dB above that, it cuts the listening time in half. So if you're listening to music at 106 dB, you probably can listen to one song and that's it. And you really should take this stuff seriously because your ears, once they get damaged, don't really come back. So what can we do to make sure that we're mixing at this ideal volume? Well, the first thing is you can go and pick up an SPL meter online. They're pretty cheap. They're usually under 20 bucks USD. Play music and start mixing at a volume that you typically do and just measure it. Be sure to read how to do the proper measurement because some SPL meters require you to hold them straight up. Other ones will require you to point it at a speaker. If you're looking for a link for a cheap SPL meter, I have them in the description. So check that out if you're interested in picking up one of these and calibrating your monitors so that you can be the most effective mixer possible. And if you see that you're mixing above 85 dBA, then you might want to think about lowering the volume a bit. 
And you're probably saying, well, if I lower the volume, then the frequency response will change and my mixes will probably sound worse. That is certainly true, but you can always turn up the volume and really crank it up nice and loud for maybe 15 seconds, 30 seconds to get even better perspective of how your song sounds at these loud volumes. Okay, that's when the bass will really come in and you'll know if you've overdone the bass or not. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with mixing at about 75 dBA and then cranking up to 100, maybe 105 to get it to like a concert volume so you really can identify what's wrong with the low end. And then just turn it back down, make the adjustments, and then maybe later turn it back up. It's a great strategy. I use this all the time, and it will really give you the best of both worlds where you have the flattest frequency response just to check your mix, and then you can mix for really long periods of time at these lower volume levels. So with that, let me know in the comments below how loud you mix music at. Do you use this strategy where you turn it up really loud and then back down and then mix quietly, or do you just crank it to 11 and just mix through all the pain? I'm super curious to see what other people are doing, and I love to have these discussions with you. And if you're curious about hearing loss and what the recommended guidance is from the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, I have a link to their PDF recommendations in the description as well. And while you're in there checking it out, don't forget about my free home studio gear guide because that's going to really help you make some good decisions on the next major gear purchase that you want for your home studio. I hope this video was inspirational to some of you that might be mixing at dangerously loud volumes to just dial the volume back a little bit. And then you can use some of these strategies to get the best of both worlds. Because once your hearing is gone, it's not coming back and you do not want to mix on a bunch of hearing aids. That sucks. So with that, I want to thank you again for your time and attention today. And I hope to see you in another video.